The next thing we're going to look at is angle between vectors, but we're going to specifically look at if two vectors are perpendicular. And another word for that is orthogonal. Also known as perpendicular. If you don't feel like writing the entire word out, you could uh, also use this symbol. It looks like an upside down T. Uh, I won't use that too often. Uh, but how do we know if two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal? Well, let's think about what they would look like. There'd be a right angle here. So theta would be pi over two. That's what it would mean for two to be orthogonal. So we have a way to measure the angle and that involves cosine. So what is cosine of pi over two? Cosine of pi over two is zero. Now cosine of pi over two is also u dot v over magnitude u magnitude v. So this doesn't make sense if either of these two vectors are zero. So we're gonna assume that u is not the zero vector and v is not the zero vector. You could also just look at their magnitudes. If their magnitudes are not zero, they are not the zero vector. So this is only, this entire fraction will equal zero exactly when the numerator is zero. This is gonna be the way that we're gonna check for orthogonal. So u and v are orthogonal if u dot v equals zero and you have to make sure that u is not the zero vector and v is not the zero vector. So why does it matter that the vector shouldn't be the zero vector? Well, does it make sense for the vector u to be perpendicular to the zero vector, which I just drew right here? The zero vector doesn't go any direction, so it doesn't really make sense to talk about orthogonality if one of the two vectors is zero. So we just eliminate that possibility right there. All right, so that's how we're gonna check if they're orthogonal. So that, we're just gonna take the dot product. If it's zero, they're orthogonal. If it's not zero, they're not orthogonal. So are these vectors three, negative two, and vector v will go with four, six. Are these two vectors orthogonal? So what we're gonna do is just dot the two vectors together. So three times four is 12, and negative two times six is negative 12. And that adds up to be zero. So we take the dot product and there's zero, and that is what it means to be orthogonal. So yes, they are orthogonal. So the next thing we're gonna look at is projection. of a vector onto another vector. So we can draw this out pretty easily, what it looks like. We have one vector, we'll go project, we'll project V onto W. All right, so what's a projection? Well, the best way to think about it is a shadow. And the shadow is gonna be cast perpendicular to the vector uh, that it's cast onto. So if we're gonna cast, uh, project V onto W, the light source is gonna be directly above. And the projection, I'm gonna draw in green right here. So this green vector will be the projection of V onto W. And we use a little subscript to denote the vector that's being projected onto. So 
So this projection is v dot w divided by magnitude w squared multiplied by w. So this looks a little bit tricky uh, because it's a little tricky to memorize. I have already put it on your formula page so you won't have to memorize this projection formula. And one thing to note is this entire fraction right here, this is a scalar. And then this, w, this is a vector. So <clears throat> the result of this will be a vector going in the direction of w. And depending on what the scalar is, if the scalar is a small positive number, that's what I drew right here. So it could be shorter than w. If the projection's a, a big positive number, maybe this projected vector is really long. And you can also get a negative value out of that. So what happens then? Well, in that case, V would be pointing uh, away from W, so it would be an angle more than 90 degrees. And then your projection will show up. It's still projected downwards except now we have to extend w the other direction. So this is what the projection would look like here. So that's what it would look like if v was pointing away from w. All right, so that's the projection. There is uh, another component to the projection, and it's basically what I drew with the dotted lines. So let's we'll switch to the blue marker for that. Look at the original one first. So I'm going to fill this in with the blue arrow. And this is called the orthogonal projection of V onto W. And likewise down in here, it would still be that vertical vector right there. And now I don't really have room to write, I'll move the V over. So this will be the orthogonal projection of V onto W. In either case, if you look, if you add up the projection and the orthogonal projection, and remember the way you add is you go across one vector and then you go across the other vector. If you do that, go on across one vector and across the other vector, what you're gonna get is the exact same final location as your original vector. And likewise, something, uh, the exact same thing happens here. If you go down the projection and then you go across the orthogonal projection, you will have gone the exact same amount as if you just went across the vector V. So what that means is if I add up the orthogonal projection of V onto W plus the regular projection of V onto W, I will get the vector V. So I'm gonna solve for the orthogonal projection by subtracting the regular projection. Let's see, we're gonna write this. I'll just write it down here and put a box around it orthogonal projection of V onto W is V minus projection of V onto W. So it's the orthogonal projection and the regular projection. And again, both of these you do not need to memorize. Uh, they'll be already on your cheat sheet. You'll need to use them and know they exist, but you won't have to memorize them. They're a little tricky to memorize, and so that's why I will give them uh, to you on your cheat sheet. So let's do some example problems now. So find the vector projection of 
v, which is i plus 3j, on 2, w, which is i plus j. And also the orthogonal projection. So first thing I'm going to write in diamond notation. And go and grab that projection formula right there at the top of the screen. And we're projecting, yeah, V onto W. So this is W dot V divided by magnitude W squared multiplied by W. So I'm just going to figure out the what's inside the parentheses first, and then we'll just write the value for W, the outer W at the end. So we have 1, 1 dot 1, 3 divided by magnitude w squared. So that's 1 squared plus 1 squared. I'm just looking at w right here. Squaring both terms, I could write square root squared, but that's going to end up canceling out. So we'll just save a little time and just leave it like that right there. It's this times w, so we'll figure out what this is. Dot product, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times 3 is 3, divided by 2 times w, so that's 4 over 2, which is 2, w, and w is 1, 1. So distribute that, remember this is a scalar product, so you're going to distribute the 2 inside, so you get 2, 2. Let's go ahead and graph these out as well, these are pretty easy vectors to graph over 1 up 3 this is the vector v the vector w is 1 1 all right let's pretend like this is more accurate there we go so I'll use the same colors I used before so if we project now remember we're projecting onto W, so W is not actually long enough here, so we need to extend it out. We project downwards. Here is the projected vector. Now it's going the same way W is, and W is 1, 1, and on here it looks like it should be longer than the W vector, it turns out, yes it is, it's twice as long as W. So this should be 2, 2. My graph's not super accurate, but it's pretty close to 2, 2. What about the orthogonal projection? We're about to compute that. We can certainly draw it here. Here is the orthogonal projection of V onto W. So let's go ahead and compute that vector. And we're going to use the orthogonal projection formula right there. It's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to copy it down. So our vector v is 1, 3. And our projected vector is 2, 2. And just do the subtraction. So again, we have 1 minus 2 in our first coordinate, and then 3 minus 2 in the second coordinate. So we get negative 1, comma, 1. So negative 1, 1 is our orthogonal projection, and that looks pretty close to what we got right there. So go left 1, go up 1, and that's the orthogonal projection. Now we're going to look at some word problems, and take a little break before we do that.